Hey, what's up? I sculpted this character in Blender, but today, we're just gonna do a super casual walkthrough of how I did the first step of the character, the head. I'm gonna go into the front view. If you didn't know this, you can just grab an, any image from your desktop, drag it right into the 3D view like that, and it puts it in there as a reference image. Okay, so when I'm making characters, the first thing I like to do is set up a world scale. So, let's just say this character is 1.8 meters tall. He looks like a tall guy, you know? We'll say he's 1.8 meters tall. I'm just gonna bring my default cube up and make sure it's standing on that x-axis there. If I apply that location now, I can go into edit mode here and I can just grab the top vertices and I can see the, the top mark. And it's 2 meters. I'm just gonna set this back to 1.8 meters. So now, I have basically like a ruler to know how tall my character should be. And if I put my character about right there... Okay, so I'll delete that and I'll bring in a new cube here. And I'm just gonna start like making the basic shapes of this character. We'll start with the face though. So I always scale a cube down. I usually have like a pretty consistent starting point when I'm making a character's head. Um, I will usually hit Control one to add a subdivision surface to it. And then I'll go into edit mode here. And then if I grab the top vertices, I increase the mean crease up to one. And then I'll do the same thing for the bottom ones in that order. So that way we get sort of this creased look. I'll keep this at 1 for now, and then apply it. So I have this shape, which is the shape I like to start my characters in. I will just scale the whole thing up a little bit. I usually take the, the middle line here, and I put it right at the eyebrow height. And then get some forehead room with the top a little bit. And then this bottom part can act as sort of where the jaw tapers in. And I'm not worrying about the cheeks right now. I'll sculpt those in in a bit. So I'll go to the side view here, and I'll just grab, pull these forward a bit, forward up the chin a little bit, and we will just bring the chin in a little bit, left and right. Now it's time to make room for the eyes, so I'll go back into the front view, and I will drop a, an edge loop right in the middle of where the eyes are, and then one for where the cheeks should be. And now I can just pull the eye socket in, and I'll just bevel that out a little bit so we have some more room here for the eyes to live. I'll also extrude the top of this head up just to round it up, the whole shape out some more. So I do think everything needs to come out a little bit more. Look at that. Yes, we're good. Oh, let's make it a little thicker everywhere around. And just bring the chin down. Very cool. So this is just helping to define the face. Now, I'll start to add in some other shapes as well. You don't, I don't ever really want to add too much geometry in this first stage, because I'm really just playing with like primitive shapes. Use proportional editing tool to get this shape a little better. And I'm just going to grab everything, go to the top with the shear tool. You can keep the, the proportions and just sort of give everything a little a little shift. Okay, I made one ear and I will just go ahead and mirror that over. Now one of the super defining features of this character is the, the big long nose. So let's let's make that too. Add another cube in here. Sometimes it can be tricky to get the nose the way you like it to be. At first. Right at first, but it always works this way out. Just drop a little edge loop in the front, and then move these all back. I try to do the best I can to match this geometry up to where, generally where, where the edges seem to be, but I don't, I don't try that hard because um, we're just going to remesh this for the sculpt later anyway. Okay, and I think the nose actually kind of like tapers in a little bit. Nice, I like that. So I think the nose probably isn't that. Here's where I'm gonna start cheating the reference a little bit. It's different when you draw in 2D versus when you mock things up in 3D because in 2D you can exaggerate the proportions a little bit to, to really craft a pose, whereas 3D, we're building the rig first and then we can pose this character later. Just because I want to, I'm gonna bring the, the bridge of the nose in just a little more. 
think I'm going to do the beard for real, as opposed to using hair particles, just because I think it'll suit the style of this character pretty well. I'm just going to do it from grabbing mesh data that's already here. I'll just duplicate this off here. P, separate by selection. I just have a nice little piece here at the bottom. That is our, uh, that will be used as our beard. We can extrude everything along the normals. Just bring it down a little bit. Yeah, the beard comes down to like a tip down here. So you want to do that justice, make it look good. This beard should go down beneath the mouth a bit. Let's look at it from the side view. For the mustache, I will add a mirror modifier. I usually don't, for no other reason than the fact that I'm usually just too lazy to add a mirror modifier, but that's stupid because I end up, you know, usually end up doing more work without it than I would have spent trying to just add the mirror modifier on in the first place. Cool. Okay. So this is a nice starting place for a character for the sculpt. So we have these three different shapes here. I'm going to hide the mustache for now. I'll apply any modifiers that are on these three and just control J, join them all together. So I'll do a series of steps here. So I'll go into sculpt mode and I'll hit shift R and I'll use this grid to determine how finely I want to remesh this character. And I don't want to go too, too crazy at first. So I'll just do about that much and hit control R and then it remeshes everything into the general shape, but it gives us a bunch of vertices now and it looks particularly crummy, but it's okay. We have space to work from now. So I'll just turn on dynamic topology, and I usually like to turn the detail size down to four. I'll just I like to go with the, with these little clay strips here, and just yeah, just just start drawing in a little bit of detail. I just draw some clay strips in, and then I go to the smooth brush, and then I smooth them out. And I just usually do that to cover the character at first, just to get a base a base layer down. Keep in mind the reference image. In fact, I'm actually going to bring the reference image up a little bit closer. Got some little avocado ears right now. Those ears are huge. Who let me do this? Let's, let's bring some of those cheeks in. So I really want to just, I, I like to do cheeks with the, with the clay strips brush. So like when you look at a character, there's all kinds of like wrinkles and lines on the character's face and the clay strips brush just works super nice for that. So I just grab the clay strips and I'm start with, start with these little cheek lines here that extend. So I'll just start drawing some of those lines down and I'll also use those lines to, I'll just try to try to keep in mind sort of like the flow of how this character's moving. So we have real real droopy under the eyelids and those will come around and create this cheek shape right in here sometimes it's helpful to turn on matte cap projection for your character so you can really it really helps just it kind of helps just visualize the actual shape of the character while you're doing it okay, now smooth brush we'll kind of bring that down All this is gonna probably be, all this will be covered up with the beard, but we gotta have it looking nice anyway. Let's get a little bit of a chin definition right in here. All right, I feel like that's starting to happen. Starting to get something going on here. The nose needs a little more work for sure. So, first thing I'll do is I'll just draw sharp right along the nose, right down the crease of it. Because the character's got a sharp nose, especially as it gets down here. Okay, looking better. Smooth it out. So what do I notice? I want to make those these lines a little more apparent. So I'll just go ahead. I'm going to actually remesh this again 
So I'll hit Shift R. I'll turn off dynamic topology, and now I can Shift R, and I can bring up this. So this is like the density scale we're talking about. And I want to make this super dense, and let's just go Control R and see what happens. Okay, cool. So we've remeshed now. So now I can just turn dynamic topology back on after I remesh and keep going a little bit. Okay, I want to add in some eyeballs here. I'm going to bring my reference image back over top here. I'll add in a sphere. Scale it way the heck down. And I'll just place it right over where the eye is. Make sure the head is relatively centered. But I'm placing this in edit mode, so that way I can mirror this eyeball. And I can just drop it back into the socket where I feel like it's nice. Actually, that's pretty cool right there. Let's scale it all down a little bit. Now we have these eyes here, I'll just go ahead and give them a shade smooth, and um, if I just grab this vertice here in the, in the center, hit control plus, twice, you can scale this in, and I can just extrude inward a little cavity for these eyes, and let's just take a look at the eyes. So we have, it's good to just draw them over here, we have eyelids that really sit like low on the pupil, and then it's exaggerated way deep down, like how deep the bottom eyelid hangs. This character right now is posing for the camera, right? And we're, and when you're making a 3D character, you're not usually trying to make the character pose at all. You're just making the character how they are at their most natural T-pose, arms out, straight-faced set. In this case, I think I'm actually going to probably stick closer to the drawing, just because of the nature of the character's background. The character is lonely, sad, um, the eyes might tend to be like that more often than not. So go back, grab our character's mesh. And when I'm doing eyelids, I love the clay strips brush. And for me, it's just a, a matter of a back and forths. So first I'll just grab the inflate brush and set it for minus and I'll just start. I'll carve out the, the cavity here. And I can just start dropping in some clay strips. And again, we really want to try to recreate that shape as best as possible. Okay, we got to bring the upper right eyelid down some more. And I really like how this is, you can feel the pinch in here. I want to make sure it's happening more on the right hand side too. And when you're doing this, like, the, the emotion really starts to come out. So you can really clearly tell, like, pretty quickly how the character's feeling and if it matches. Like, this character already looks way more serious than this character is back here. And that's a problem. We gotta fix that. It's just the way the eyelids carry. Eyelids and the eyebrows carry so much emotion. We're missing some of that hair. That's gonna help, especially the eyebrows. So I'm just going to make some eyebrows quick. Quick little eyebrow sculpt there. Mirror that over. Just use this pinch brush to just pinch, pinch together the, the creases of where the the eyes will meet. Sweet, that's cool. <laughs> I like that. The eyes need to feel a little droopier. I feel like less cheeky right up front. Just some wrinkles here. Oh yeah, it's definitely time to start sculpting some beards in. I've also realized I didn't do any of these, uh, I didn't do these, um, sideburns. Extrude. Up. Scale it. 
Scala on the X. Oh yes, that's going to help the character so much. This is going to go right up into the hair. I'll just go ahead and subdivide this, just simple, twice, and apply it. So, one thing we're missing is the way the beard sort of like angles out like this. Dynamic topology, as per usual. X mirror. So right now the beard is way too long. Let's bring the whole thing up a little bit. Turn off X symmetry again just to get some uniqueness going on. Let's get some basic colors in here because I'm just way too excited about this now. Make the skin color. Make the skin color. Just eye drop that. Oh, this is going to be so cool. You can just tell. Let's just add a beanie here quick. Start with a sphere. Probably scale out this part here. Just making this beanie with primitive shapes, you know. Beanie. Shaded that color. And we'll just turn up the roughness, turn down the specular. Make the sheen like I don't make the sheen like three. Nice beanie material. Actually, this character is kind of backlit, so we'll bring this out here, farther off, and then we'll add another one, way back here, backlighting our character. So that way we can get the right vibe. Turn up the t turn up the power of this light. Bang! All right. Alright, so like I mentioned, that was only the head, and there's a full body to go, and shoes, and arms, and hands, and clothes, texturing, rigging, all that stuff. Today I just wanted to give you a very casual, chill session of me working on the character, and I just wanted to cover a small portion of it. What I'm thinking of doing is making a second video that's kind of like a post-mortem, where I'll go back and I'll look at the character after it's fully finished, and we'll just do another like casual talk and walk through and just look at like look at all the different aspects, look at the rig, and just sort of like jump in jump into the project files a little bit. So if you're into that idea, drop a comment below, let me know. Shout out to Avaline Stokart for this amazing character design. I'm gonna link the Instagram below and just check out all the amazing character designs. I really just I love them all. They're so cool. If you want to see the completed character design as an Instagram reel, go check me out on Instagram and share your work with me. I love when people DM me and show me their work, talk about Blender and nerd out a little bit. You know how it goes. So yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe and uh, catch you next time.